Sorry, it's a bit late. Okay, so I haven't sent you the commands yet, uh, which I'll do it today. I've been crazy weekend, um, so I was not able to do anything. Uh, but I have a Windows machine set up for you to uh, to show how it works in Windows. Uh, I believe the other day that uh, we've seen. Okay, let me go back to the presentation. Uh, hope you can see my screen by the time I log into the other machine. Uh, you have any questions so far uh, on the things that we have covered? No. Okay. So I'm actually trying to connect to. I have, uh, I have one question. What is vanity URL? So can you explain this? Uh, what is vanity URL? How we we'll use in our size and everything? Okay, so vanity URLs are uh, are nothing but URLs which are like more user friendly. Um, so, for example, if you see in um, in AEM, okay, let me get to see if I have one instance running. Uh, okay, I do this. I'm running an instance. Okay, I'm running an instance. Okay, um, so uh, let me get there to get you understand. So. And I believe I should have my publisher running as well on this machine. Okay, that's what I'm So, okay, so technically I don't even need an author. So, uh, if you look at this, right, um, if you can see my screen, I have a publisher opened. Okay, so if you see the screen, uh, so if you look at the URL, right, the URL says content geometrics outdoor en dot html, right? Uh, so uh, for example, uh, if I'm running a campaign, if I'm running something, right, um, it's very catchy that I give a catchy URL, right? For example, I set it as www.abc.com, uh, which www right? uh, is very easy for me to go propagate as well, right? So that is exactly what is vanity URL is, right? A user friendly URL, not not technically like this, right? This is very tough for someone to keep it remembered, as well as this is not as easy user friendly for someone to, you know, go uh, share it. As well, right? Vanity mm -hmm. URLs are nothing but URLs which are generally user friendly uh, URLs, which kind of takes away the complexity of the URL that it has, and then gives you something which is more uh, user friendly, which you can remember. Uh, that's that's the difference. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I have a Windows machine as well. Um, and I will uh, I'll have to get that. Uh, so before that, we'll quickly go over about um, things that we have seen. Um, so we've talked about uh, technology stack. We have set it up on author. Uh, I hope we have not seen uh, touch optimized UI and classic UI yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then uh, we didn't talk about AEM architecture and other interfaces and all of that, right? So, yes. uh, okay. So, before that, I'll show you a Windows machine and then we will go to this touch optimized UI and all of that, maybe in that machine itself. Um, Hey, Srinivas, can you make the other system as presenter? I have logged in as Lakshmanan PL. If you can make that as presenter, 
I'm not sure if he's there on the call. Let me. Let me see if he checks this message and makes my other system as present. Oh, I can do this from here. Cool. If that works. Yeah, but I don't get a present box. Okay, you know if you can see my Windows machine, this is my Windows machine. Okay, uh, so I've downloaded the system over here and I have the AEM running here. So mm -hmm. by default, um, by default, when you start a AEM jar, which does not have any, you know, which does not have any naming conventions, which it can understand, it starts as author, right? You haven't given any specific configurations. You, you're not saying that it should start as author or it should start at this port. All of this is not set. Then it is going to start as author on 45024. That is the default startup. Then so how you can that, install this um, this author instance? So can you show me in Windows system? I'm sorry? Uh, how you in means how you set up this uh, AM 6.2 in your Windows system? So can you please oh. show me? Oh. I can go over that. So this is a jar file that I've got. There is there is nothing that I've done here. And then this is the license oh. property. I believe you would have both of these. Uh, let me go over and delete it. Here. Uh, I delete my CRX quick start. So CRX quick start is not going to be there. So you can uh, copy anywhere in your system this both files, right? This quick yeah. start and yeah. one is license. Okay. Um. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, maybe I will keep it here itself. Uh, so this is my actually this is my publisher. So I don't wanna. Mm -hmm. this and then keep it as publisher so there is no uh, relation between this jar file and this folder this is a separate folder so don't get confused with that uh, so i have a java 1.8 installed in my machine so i've downloaded java 1.8 it's very straightforward um, but this publisher um, you can store these two file inside author folder or in publisher folder no, it can be any folder. I'm just keeping it inside it because I don't have other folders. Or what I can do is I can even show you this way maybe. I'll create a folder. So it doesn't matter. It can be anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll keep it as author. And I move these files inside it. Mm -hmm. So now you have a separate author folder and you have a separate publisher folder. So I have Java 1.8 already installed in this machine. So I'm going to show. I've just downloaded and installed it recently. It's not rocket science, you can just download the Java 1.8. Um, yes, 1.8 in my system also I have 1.8. Ah, okay, so that should be fine. Uh, yes. So all you have to do is, uh, if you open your command prompt, uh, and do a Java iPhone version, it should show up, uh, Java yes. should show up. That means it's yes. set in the uh, variable, environment variable, right? So you can use it anywhere in the system. So um, what I'm going to do is, uh, so the, the only prerequisite is 
it should be a java 1.8 and it should, should be a jdk 1.8 and not just J, jre it should be jdk 1.8 and uh, java so i'm going to go to my downloads folder that is where my uh, software is i'm going to go to author and i can just open it double click it will run one option of it is double click and it will run it will start up the other option is we can go to command prompt and run as well so this take to, gonna take quite a while because this is gonna start the whole crx quick start folder and all of this so if mm -hmm. you uh, if you see it here you see the crx quick start folder has come so what i'm gonna do is i have a sigwin installed um, so i can show you how it will look like in sigwin then how we will start this publish environment also means inside publish folder this same uh, same jar file and same license property will store us in different yes it is the same it's the same so the 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 run mode it takes it's going to decide what are all packages it has to install for example if it runs as author it pretty much installs all the packages and it's and pretty much starts all the services right uh, but if it starts as publisher, it does not install all the packages and it does not start all the services right? it only starts the required one. For example, uh, the, the login page which comes as soon as you hit the author is not required for publisher, right? So that particular service will not even start. Now, there are a few other services that uh, publisher does not need. For example, publisher does not need a replication. There is a replication service which runs. So publisher does not start all of those services right? because that's not required. No, okay, but, but if I want to see inside publish, then what I will do? And after um, I know in author how I will start this environment, but in publish, uh, how I will install in my system? Or it's required or not? I'm sorry. Uh, in this publish environment, it started is required or not in my system? So can you show me please this publish it environment? Also? If you have to publish and see, it is required. So, for example, yes. if you are if you are generating a page, you have to see how the page looks like in a publisher. So, a published mm -hmm. environment is required to see how the look like is, is going to be. Oh, right. yes. So, I'm going to check if my authoring instance is up. It's coming up. Mm -hmm. So, I can check if the after uh, after this author instance um, is completed, then you can show me this published environment also because I want to um install in my system also this publish and manage yeah it is the same jar file the same license file what i've shared with you uh, all you have to make sure is you rename the jar file into a specific naming convention and then it should start as publisher okay just change this port number port number right yeah, so you have to change uh, okay i'll show you how it has to look like uh, so you have to change the name as like this so i'll put it on the gtm so that you can get it uh, it can be chat Rename it as like this am publish hyphen p 4503. Uh, jar is not required, maybe so you just skip this and then start the instance, it will start as uh, as publisher. Did you got the message? Uh, yes, okay, cool. So you just have to rename the file like this, and then you should have the license file also inside the same location, and that should. Uh, that should be working. Okay, but the same process, right? Means double click inside this jar file, then it's done. Yeah, and that should start. Mm -hmm. uh, recommend that not author and publisher to be on the same folder, right? You should have a separate folder for author and a separate folder for publisher because both mm -hmm. creates a folder called CRX Quick Start, and that will screw up the whole setup itself, right? For example, if you are on a folder and then you want to create author and publisher inside it, you should create a folder called author and then have your jar file and license file inside it. 
and then you should have your folder called publish and then you should have a jar file and a license file inside it right? recommended not to create um, you know both in the same structure right i mean it, rather than recommended it will screw up the whole setup itself mm -hmm. um okay so this is still coming up uh So here I can uh, technically go to uh, users, users, my name, downloads, training software, and I can see this author, and I see the author file here. So this is a sigwin setup sigwin is a straightforward one you can just download it from the internet and it's a exe file double click it it'll install it does not uh, require any kind of uh, user configurations and all that it's a straightforward one so it is coming up The first time startup always uh, takes time, so it's gonna mm -hmm. take a while to get it started. Mm -hmm. um, so in the meantime, uh, okay. coming up.
हेलो श्रीनिवास कैन यू मेक लक्ष्मण एंड पी एल एस द प्रसेंटर ओके यू वांट द अदर यूजर टू बी द प्रसेंटर ओके कैन मेक इट फॉर अदर यूजर आई एम गिविंग द ऑर्गेनाइजर एज वेल ओके So I can see my screen. Uh, so my authoring instance is up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the authoring URL to oh, see yes. if it is coming up in my Windows machine. So this is nothing that I have done. I have a Java 1.8 installed and I have the jar file and the license file in a folder. What I mm -hmm. all did is I just double click the folder and then I got the uh, AEM running. Okay, I'm trying it here to log into the system. and uh, this is my other instance right so there is no big rocket science here when it comes to windows it's a straight forward installation and then we get the uh, authoring instance running right uh, before i get to the connectivity things uh, what we will do is we will look at the different authoring inter interfaces which are available and just mm -hmm. be fairly okay the first is the uh, right after all that okay. so what we will do is even we will do the publisher setup as well because that is how the flow goes i'm going to just quickly make the other user presenter and show you that and then i'll go over setup and uh should be able to see my screen so uh let's look at what is there um so author setup we have done the author setup uh, we were able to start the instance you can able to access the instance and all of that and then i go over to the publisher one publisher is once again straight forward the same way and then we're going to see the different authoring interfaces so i think that is probably what we can do today and uh, yeah so i'll go over the publishing instance now in the same box hope that's going to work if that's not going to fail otherwise i should use the machine that is already running with my publisher so uh, i'm back into another system for showing up how to start the publisher we can start this both author and publish at same time or is any yeah, problem we yeah yeah okay. we can do that it runs on different ports so we don't have to worry the only thing is the machine has to be uh, capable of doing it so i would not recommend any system which is less than 8 gb we shouldn't be starting both author and publisher even 8 gb is not so great but at least it will somehow run 
anything less than 80 it's going to fail you know uh, so recommended is not to do anything which is less than 8 gb so uh, so if you see i have already double clicked this and my publisher has started i have a crx quick start so the advantage of this is it's going to come the publishing inst instance is going to come up faster so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click so if you see this the naming convention i have aem aem i mean you can give any name in that front that doesn't matter the publish and the iphone p4503 really matters because the publish is what is going to take it as it's a publishing instance and iphone p is for port so what you're saying is use the port as 4503 right so okay. that is but that. i can see your screen uh, in publish environment i'm sorry mm. i don't see your screen oh is it okay yes uh, i should be the presenter oh okay sorry so yeah i don't know if you can see my screen and then you can see my screen right okay yes so uh, i already have a publishing instance that has been started in this machine uh, previously so okay. that is going to give me an advantage of starting the instance so quickly rather than waiting for so long right uh, so the important catch here is the name that you know if you look at here the name that we have given this is the name that you have given you aem can be anything you can keep any name you can keep like uh, you know your name as well but the last two sections are really matters after the iphone right the publish really means that it is going to start as publishing instance and iphone p4503 means that it is telling you that start in the port 4503 right those two are very important to start this as publishing instance okay so mm -hmm. Oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to it and start this instance. This is going to take a while and it's going to eat up my memory. Okay. This is starting up. So this is, I mean, the requirement is the same. There are no differences. You should have a Java 1.8 and then you should have the jar and the license file. That should technically start the instance. Mm No, you are working on any Java project or in AEM project on your company. So I am a AEM administrator. So I am. Uh, so I, I do a couple of things. Um, one is I do a lot of consulting. So I work as a part-time consultant in one in a, in a company, and then I do uh, trainings, primarily corporate trainings on AEM, on the oh. administration. No, actually, uh, if I search any job in mm -hmm. admin part, so you can help me. Oh, yeah. yeah. If there is any that I come come across, I'll definitely let you know because this is like a very niche thing. They hire like uh, the ratio is always five is to one. So if they hire, if, if a company hires like five developers, there is one administrator mm -hmm. hired, right? So the ratio is always five is to one. The, the, the ratio is actually small, but if you see the, it, it has a very powerful impact in it, right? People who have that knowledge has, has always uh, higher hedge to demand things as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then you can um, share with me some real time mm -hmm. knowledge actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely okay. go over on the practical experiences that I've gone through. Uh, there, are, there are multiple instances that I you know I've uh, experienced in, in, in at least the last four years that I've been working on AEM. Oh, you have worked on before four years? Yeah, I've been in this AEM field for like four years now. I started in um, 2012, I believe, 2012 or 2013. Then you worked on CQ5 yeah. starting, right? Okay. Yeah, I start, no, I started, no, it, it started very early. This is like a, so the history of it is like it's a, it's a day software thing, uh, previously called, uh, it was done by a, day software company nice. and uh, just give me a minute. it uh, so uh, before adobe bought it adobe bought this version uh, adobe bought this software from day software by uh, by the version at least i think it is 4.4 .4 or something and then and from there on it is always adobe's one 
So I started working on this from five dot three CQ five dot three. So five dot three, five dot four, five dot five, five dot six, and then six dot two, six dot one, two, and now it is three. Three, it's not commonly used across, but uh, uh, yeah, technically three is the latest one. So, uh, mm -hmm. Now uh, I want. Want to know any openings of this um, admin part, or I saw only development part some uh, mm -hmm. openings. But yeah, that's what I said, right? I mean, it, it is like a very niche thing. Uh, it's mm -hmm. it, the ratio is always five is to one. It's uh, uh, how do I put it? It is. It's a very complicated uh, uh, job, uh, but the. Mm -hmm. The openings are very, very good. Yes. And it would be a very, very minimalistic amount of opening uh, coming through in admin. But the advantage is if there is an opening and if we get through, there is a lot more that we can demand because uh, not a lot of people know how to manage this application. And a lot of people go by the understanding that it's just another Java project that they can manage, uh, which is not technically true. Right? It is not just another Java project that someone can manage. I mean, it's not like a Tomcat application it's not like a jboss application it's like a straightforward tomcat application servers and all you have to play with is that server.xml file right and uh, you're done with that uh, that's that's definitely not the case with administration because it has a lot more to it where people really mm -hmm. underestimate it uh, when it comes to new companies which try to get into aem and all of that they really underestimate the value of how a, how an admin plays a part in the system mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so my publishing instance is also up. This is my authoring and this is my publishing. Uh, so very straightforward. No, uh, no kind of uh, differences from authoring to publishing. Just that the instance starts as publishing. If you see by default, it lands onto onto this URL, right? So I'm going to type this. When you see on author by default, it lands into a, a login page. If you remember, right? Mm -hmm. Publishing by default lands into a externally exposed page, right? A page which is available for an end user to consume. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is about my publishing instance, and um, mm, anything. Okay, so one thing that we have to, uh, to kind of understand uh, what is the differences between an authoring an instance and publishing instance when we say that there are few services which are started in author, few services which are not started in publisher. So let's go to this particular location. This we will see in detail um, when we go through this location. But for now, just for your understanding to see, to show you the differences of how many bundles and services are started. Go to see RxD. Okay, I'm logged in. Oh, sorry, this is going to take system console. Then I'm going to go to system console here. This is just to show you how what is the difference uh, in terms of bundles and it comes to author and publisher. Could be the same. So if you see, there are 471 bundles which are active in author. Mm -hmm. But if you see here, there are only 470 bundles which are active in, in publisher. Right? 470 is installed and 470 is active. Here, 471 mm -hmm. is installed and 471 is active. Right? Uh, so it, uh, you know, to give you a few examples, like it will not have the uh, authentication module coming up. So the authentication. Uh, Authentication service will not uh, will not be installed and active in uh, in publisher. Uh, for example, uh, uh, authoring instance has something called uh, data replication to standby. So that service will not be available in publisher. So there are a few examples like this, which is not 
which will not be available in publisher, but it will be available in author. So that's why there will be a difference in terms of services being started in author and the publishing instances. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. So uh, any questions on the publishing instance? Uh, we'll go over, over about how yeah, authoring and publishing connects and all of that. Uh, but uh, you know, as far as so far, as, do you have any questions on this? No. Okay. Cool. So um, what we can do now is uh, quickly. Okay. So now we have seen author. We have seen publisher. Now let's go back to author, and then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you different interfaces in author. I think this is something that you have, you know, learned or experienced in the in the past that when you are working on the system. Mm -hmm. um, so there are two types of authoring in interface available. One is called a classic UI interface. That's a classic interface. And then there is mm -hmm. another called a touch optimized UI interface, which is a, which is more like a uh, device friendly interface which can be used to do drag and drop the components and just keep authoring it uh, where you are being on different devices right uh, that's the biggest advantage that we see when it comes to touch optimized ui classic ui was uh, was primary until 5.6 and starting 6.0 they started with touch optimized ui and touch optimized ui is what is primary now Classic UI is slowly fading away. They'll take it away at some point in time that the whole thing will get cut off. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go to a particular page. Let me do this. Okay, I'm trying to do this, this page. We call this page opens up in uh, in a touch optimized UI fashion. So I'll show you how it will look like. You might have probably heard all of this in your uh, um, developer training. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a touch optimized UI. Um, so how do you, how you can figure it out is one is obviously the display. And the other one on the URL, if you have to figure it out, there's something called editor.html. If it is editor.html, it is a touch optimized UI. Yes. Okay. That is slow because the publishing instance is also running. If I'm not going to go over it, why should I run the publishing instance? Let me start it over.
actually doing this flow. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is I think this machine is going to be slower. So what I'll do is I'll probably uh, get to this machine. Uh, this will technically be faster. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, I go here, then here. Uh, and then I finally open this. This is, I think, a page that I've created. I was testing it. So, and it should come up fairly faster. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, uh, this is a touch optimized UI. Um, with this, you can figure it out. Uh, so, um, um, so this is a touch optimized UI. The, the reason why it's being up is in most cases, people do authoring in, in different devices, maybe phone stabs and, mm -hmm. and devices that they can think of. So this UI is primarily designed for that. Say, for example, I can straight away come here, maybe like use a text field, like a drag and drop, and put the text field back here. Uh, and I have a text field here. I can put some content into it. This is uh, test content, and it's and it's just that straightforward, right? So I can just use the content, and I say done, and I can straight away go publish the page right i mean i can just i can do a okay. publish yes. so this is very straightforward uh, touch optimized ui is primarily you is, is primarily in existence because of you know authoring can be used in different interfaces different devices and that you know the their ui has to support uh, giving a support to all the devices and that's the reason why touch optimized ui is in place and uh, you should see all the components here uh, and then you should see all the assets here. So you can see all the assets as well in this. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, this is the components and assets. And this is actually whatever you can do as a operation in this particular page. You can open the properties. You can start a workflow. You can log the page. You can do publish and publish. So all of these operations possible on this page is available on this. Mm -hmm. right? And you can edit or you can do a preview, right? I mean, this, both are available. Previews like. This is like a preview. Your, your, mm -hmm. All the left maps are gone. Uh, this is pretty much how it will look like in an external system, except for the top bar. Right? This is how it will look like. Um, so this is a touch optimized UI. Let's look at how a, a classic UI would look like. I'm going to make it as classic UI. See a flash. Uh, most of the AEM out of the com uh, box components does not support uh, classic UI at this point in time. Uh, a few do support because their old components few does not support. So uh, we'll have to be careful about what kind of components that we use if we use a classic UI. So this is what, I mean, the functionality wise, both are same. There are no differences, it's just the UI differences, right? So here you have to open the sidekick. This is called sidekick. I think until 5.6, it was very primary. They call it a sidekick, very famous. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's been all removed. Uh, it's all, uh, you know, in page thing. Uh, so here you would find all the components which are available that you can use uh, the similar thing no differences and then you would find uh, images assets over here which you can drag and drop into the page and then if you have to publish you go to the properties and you see the same set of things you would see it on the other section in the the editor.html or the touch ui and you can activate the page deactivate the page publish, and publish the page here it's called activate deactivate the page you go to page properties so all of that is possible and you can start a workflow here as well right that start a workflow is part of this that's so uh, that's the difference between a touch optimized ui and a classic ui right? i mean classic ui is primarily designed for people who use desktop and then they make content changes uh, so these two uis are still currently available they have not removed the classic ui yet but touch optimized ui is primarily used okay. That is about touch UI and what classic uh, UI. Do you have any questions on this? No. Okay. So let's go over. Uh, let's look at the touch optimized UI. Let's look at the system architecture. 
Um, so uh, a typical AEM system will look like this. There will be an author here. Um, and then uh, optionally, you can have a dispatcher in front of the author. Um, so uh, it is always optional. I've never seen people use it except for one or two companies that I worked on. I've seen they use a dispatcher because they might they might have multiple authoring instances underneath it. But otherwise, mm -hmm. it, it's primarily an author directly connect to the authoring instance without any dispatcher in between. Uh, it, it's a direct authoring instance. So they create the content in this authoring instance and then they do a content publishing. As soon as the content is created or generated, they do the content publishing, which means they are trying to push the content out to the publishing instance so that the end users can see. Right. And this is a publisher instance. The publisher instance is nothing but called a content rendering engine. So uh, and when an end user accesses the uh, website, uh, AEM website, what it does is either you can have a optional dispatcher. I've seen most people use dispatcher on in front of publisher, not in front of author. The reason being that it gives a load balancing capability as well as it kind of you know gives you a security uh, measure as well. So uh, it, it gives a lot more security in, in terms of uh, the content being accessed. Right? So uh, it becomes a, a little more foolproof uh, where people attackers can't, re can't really do anything inside the system. Right? So, um, so uh, for example, let's take that there is a dispatcher in front of publisher. So when a customer accesses the website, he comes lands in dispatcher and the dispatcher in turn talks to the publisher, gets the content, stores it in a system and then it renders it to the end user. Which is the, Customer, and this is the typical AEM architecture. Um, you can okay, have multiple. But, yeah, go ahead. In, uh, in my company, also using this dispatcher in publish environment means if any content author to publish means after any page activate, this content is not appearing in our publish environment. Then go to dispatcher and clean some cache like this. They are doing. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, go ahead. But any, uh, not any customer, I think, but you told me just like uh, any customer to view mode, then they go to the dispatcher after this, uh, go to this publish environment. I don't understand anything inside so, this publish. Okay, so let's let's understand this, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, okay, let me ask you this question. When someone like me, for example, you, you have a website, when someone like me accesses the website, which particular instance the person would land into? Does he land into author, he lands into publisher, or does he land into a dispatcher? Right? So yeah. the external facing uh, external facing instance will be a dispatcher always. Okay. Um, so that means when you when for example, let's take uh, uh, let's take Amazon.com, right? Amazon, yeah. when you hit Amazon.com, you get the page, everything is rendering and all of that, right? From which system that information is coming to us, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm giving you a hypothetical example, right? Uh, so from which instance it's coming up? It's coming from a dispatcher, right? So no one will access the publisher or an author directly to get the, that information. That information comes from the dispatcher, right? So, uh, but where this information is being stored, right? Where this information is being, is being available at the first place is the publisher instance, right? The information is available in publisher instance. What the dispatcher does, it goes to the publisher, takes that information for us, comes back, and then it gives that to the end user, right? So the dispatcher is not allowing an end user to go to publisher directly. It's saying, okay. you know what, you wait here, I will go talk to publisher, get the content for you, and then I'll render it back to you, right? That's exactly what a dispatcher does. Okay. So uh, in, in your practical scenario, why people clear the cache is as soon as the content is activated, uh, if the content is not reflecting in the front end, for example, you are trying to access the content using the website URL, right? And you are not mm -hmm. able to get the latest content changes that you have done. Yes. Then yes. what you have to do is you go to the dispatcher and clear that particular cache of the content, or you can clear the whole cache here. So it depends on what is your requirement is. Yes. Then you yes. start getting the new content appeared in the in the website. Uh, in most cases, that is an automatic thing. It should get cleared and then the page will render properly. If that is not coming up properly, that means it is either it's not configured properly or it's, there is some kind of misconfiguration that it is not taking it, right? Uh, the mm -hmm. recommendation is not someone to manually go clear the cache and then it will start appearing. It is not the recommendation. The recommendation is 
you configure the dispatcher in the first place correctly and then it should work for every content activation activation deactivation of the content okay that's how it should work mm -hmm. okay so, uh, so that is that is what a uh, aem system architecture so th this is a typical system architecture if you see even in your company you might you guys might be using oh you know like this in terms of uh, aem authoring publishing and then a yes. dispatch. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so this is a typical AM system architecture. The the thing is, you know, people might use multiple publishers, multiple dispatchers, multiple mm -hmm. authors. So it's just mm -hmm. that the, the numbers can, might increase, but the structure will not change, right? The structure mm -hmm. will remain the same. That the, an, an author will always write the content to the author, and then the 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 content will be published into the publishing instance, and then there will be a dispatcher where it will cache all the content based on the end user access. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a typical system architecture. So there are different interfaces in AEM. Um, so, so what we will uh, do now is we will probably see what is uh, site admin and dam admin. The rest of the mm -hmm. ones we will take it uh, a little later. So let's take a look at the site admin and dam admin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So okay, so before that, interestingly, so right. Um, okay, I'm anyway, directly into site admin. Uh, so for anything that you have to go to, uh, the suggestion is to go to welcome.html as soon as you're logged in. That will give you a link to all the different interfaces, right? You can go to all the different interfaces from site admin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, let's look at uh, site admin now. Site admin is nothing but websites. So this location is the location where people create content. So this is primarily for authors, uh, not too much for admins or uh, or the developers to do. But if there are any issues, that we'll have to troubleshoot as well, right? So um, so here uh, people create their top level website, which is like Geometrics Outdoor Site. This is an example site that is given by Adobe. So this is the top level website and then underneath it you will start creating it, your structures as well right uh, the, the folders subfolders and then the uh, end, end individual pages and all of that that you can create right uh, so how people create content it's a very straightforward one for example let me go over here i have done it in the men's okay i did a trousers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a page so every page will generally have a template uh, a template is nothing but uh, a common structure for example uh, let's take a website where the header and footer always remains the same right i mean you move to any page in the website the header of the website and the footer of the website remains the same that does not change right mm -hmm. so uh, so the header and the footer will come as part of the template right i mean hypothetical example i'm giving right so in a template the header and footer would come and uh, all you have to do is you'll have to drag and drop components images and all of that in the in the page and then the page will be ready for you right so that is what a template is right i mean a header and footer not necessarily only header and footer you can have multiple things based on how your page structure is going to be uh, how your common structure is going to be uh, but you know on a typical example header and footer is pretty much common in all the pages okay. so i'm going to take one of the templates which is already available and then call it as uh, t shirts and call it as t shirts um, so uh, if you see it takes uh camel case letters capital letters and then iphones the name it does not take anything which is uh special characters right? except for iphones and underscores so i'm going to create the page with with the template um so the template is ready the page is created um so this is on the authoring instance so site admin is nothing but you can go create content so i'm creating a content there so I have a page created. I'm going to just have a couple of uh, maybe images and uh, and content. Uh, 
Maybe I don't want this. I'm going to use a component here. An image component. And see if it works out. Okay, I have an image component here. Now I'm going to go to images and then pick one of the images. Okay, the image is in place. I'm going to create another component, which is a text component. This is nothing but like I'm creating, I'm just authoring a page, right? Uh, so I'm going to do a text component here. I see the text component here. This is a test page. Okay, done. And uh, I'm done with the page. I can just move off. Uh, the page is auto saved, so I don't have to do save and all. It just gets saved automatically. Um, but in case if I want to publish the page, I can straight away go and publish this page, and this page will be published. And so the page will be published now. Mm -hmm. um, so let me go back and see if the page is published. And refresh this, see the page is already published, right? Mm -hmm. So this is as easy as creating a content and publishing the content. There is no um, rocket sensors in this. Uh, all you have to do is you can e even put it in a workflow and it can work, go in a workflow. The, the typical example I remember I gave you back as well is uh, take a, jo a journalism thing. Uh, for example, let's take like one of the papers or something. Uh, it's always the content creator will be there and then there will be a editor who reads the content and approves it and then it goes to a language guy who checks for all the proper language things and, and all of that and then it goes for a publishing on it so there are multiple people who reviews the content and before it goes for a publishing right so that is possible that's kind of workflow that's also possible in the system okay. so this is pretty much what a site admin is here you would only see content there are no uh images and assets will be available in this particular location right mm -hmm. this location uh, this content location you would not find all of those uh, so all of them will be available in the uh, dam admin section so this is a straightforward content creation section do you have any questions on this no. let me see if you can actually get to the publishing instance and show you that as well so let me believe my publisher is running still uh geometrics men okay i do a geo Geometrics uh, content geometrics men. Okay, not men. Dot HTML. Okay. So men is available. I should get T-shirts. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, okay. I have a T-shirts page. If you see here, and then the page is coming up. Uh, the image is not working for some reason. Okay. Check that out. But if you see, there is a this is a test page that we have created and the page is already published right i mean we did a publish and then it's available in the publishing instance i'll show you later down the line how the publishing works what exactly happens that the replication action happens and how that action happens when we go over about the replications um so this is about uh, site admin uh, primarily for authors to um, to kind of create content uh, if there are no questions, then we'll go over about uh, DAM admin. Okay, DAM admin is uh, is the same thing, just that it is uh, it's for assets, right? The images, PDFs, and all of that. Anything just like an attachment, uh, you would you would find it here, right? I mean, uh, the suggestion is come here, upload the file, and then go back to the page and reference it. For example, uh, let's take this particular thing. I'll see, I want to see what are all pages is using this image, right? And see the references of it, okay. There are no references. So this this particular image is not used anywhere. Um, so I'll go into geometric. So we use one image, right? For this, some um, insert is. Yeah, I can actually show that image. Uh, let me get to the, it's not on the activities, it's on men's. Am I in the right thing? Okay, it's on geometrics, okay. Um, okay, I have to see where it went into. 
uh, geometrics outdoor no activities brand uh, banners products okay okay i can check it here right away uh, Mm, geometrics outdoor en men okay oh okay it's directly uploaded back there geometrics outdoor no app okay let me take one of this to see if there are any references to so if you look at this this particular image is being used in all of these pages, right? Okay. There is a geometrics outdoor EN, the base English page is using this image. Then there is a thank you page under this location is using. The, so you could technically see all the pages which is using this image, right? So this image has been referenced in all of these pages. So the recommendation is we come upload the asset back in this location. So uploading asset is straightforward as you come here and then uh, create a new file and then that will say upload an asset to it uh, you can upload that asset and you can reference that asset in the page that uh, you are working on say for example i'll upload an asset here uh, uh, let me go here and then use one of the screen okay done I have uploaded the asset. That should be the last one. No. Uh, something called okay. The screenshot one. Okay. Uh, what I have to do is now I have to use it in my page and show you how you can um, see that. Uh, go to site admin and I will use it in my page. Okay, system is running out of charge. Okay, where is image, 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 image? Okay, I'll do another image here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then with that, I should be able to go there. And I see my latest one. I put it here. So the moment you upload it, you would, you would have it available here. So I put it over here, and then the page is ready now. If I go back and then check the image reference, mm -hmm. I see it. I'm using it in my T-shirts page, right? Mm -hmm. So this way you can identify what are all images is being used, and back and which pages they have been used. The recommendation is to come here and create the same folder structure uh, so that it becomes more easy not just to create one folder and put all the images there and then keep referencing here and there into different pages that's going to create a lot of confusion so recommendation is create the same structure that you have for content the same structure create it and then keep uploading the images as and when it comes to the specific pages if that is not a common image that is been used everywhere then you know if it is a very specific image it is used for that particular page recommendation is to come create that folder structure and put that image into that particular folder whichever the page it has been using and then uh, reference that image so that you would have a very clear uh, understanding of which image to which location you have to go search for right uh, so this is what a uh, dam admin is you uh, you upload image pdfs whatever that that's going to show up your references here as well as you can use it in anywhere in any page right so the moment you upload it it's available like everywhere uh, so you can just go drag that image and put it over so that it can be used in any of the pages that you want so that is possible right so that's what uh, dam admin is for i mean it's for assets and dams to be uploaded uh, any any questions on this you can actually activate deactivate all of this for the images or the uh, uh, assets that you upload is possible. It's, it's pretty much the similar that you see in site admin.
right? okay. you can activate the activate page you can do all of this you can delete the page so everything is possible in side admin right uh, any questions on this site admin dam admin no, no we good uh, so we'll take a look at the rest of the ones tomorrow see how much we can cover and then we'll uh, take it over to the next day if that uh, goes beyond okay 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 then we'll wind it up here today and then we'll uh, catch up uh, tomorrow yes sir thank you i'll send you over the commands i still have it on me uh, i'll have to send it over to you okay yeah, yeah, yeah. and tomorrow you can show me how uh, i can use this linux command in my windows system yeah sure yeah i'll do that i have a sick window i'll uh, show it up tomorrow yeah yes sir okay good yeah thank you thank bye. you bye bye